Yes, welcome to the No Safe Project. I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government Indicted. Of course, the website is markstevens.net, where you can get a copy of Government Indicted and get a ton of information to learn how to effectively defend yourself against these tyrants called bureaucrats. It is October 7, 2017, this live edition of the No Safe Project, live, of course, from the Fortified Compound in Mesa, Arizona. Glad to be with you here. Three hours of anarchy radio, and boy, we got a lot of stuff to get to today. We have four recent dismissals that I want to talk about. If you go to markstevens.net, you'll notice I posted two of them yesterday. And uh, I don't have the documentation for the other two, but we will get to that. You want to join me on the big show, it's 218-632-9399. 218-632-9399. I will be live on Wednesday. Uh, also live next next Saturday, uh, it's October 14th. I am not doing a show live from the Fortified Compound, though. we got a big thing planned for that. Uh, finally, I've been mentioning about doing the show uh, live at least once a month from another location. I was hoping, you know, something here in, in, in uh, the Phoenix Valley... Uh, we still have never found a place here in the Valley to do that that's got at least with sufficiently good um, Wi-Fi. But next week on the 14th at the Living Tea Brewing Company in Oceanside, California, we will not only be doing the show live, so if you are in Southern California, definitely check it out, uh, it's 302 Wisconsin Avenue in Oceanside, California. We're going to do the three hours of Anarchy Radio, and then we're going to really have some fun because we are going to play some blues. I am bringing the bass and my Les Paul, so I will be covering both uh, for a blues jam. Mostly improvisational stuff, but, you know, we, uh, there might be some... Uh, there might be... Uh, uh, some songs you recognize, but otherwise we should still have a lot of fun. Looking forward to, to, to seeing Bill and the guys out there. We've never played before, so there's going to be a lot of improvisation. But hey, that's what it's all about, if you ask me. It's just creating music on the fly. Uh, nothing else like it in the world. Uh, I'd love to do that. It's been a long time since I've, I've been able to do that, and since we couldn't do it at Libertopia. Hey, let's... Just have a little bit of spontaneous order and whatnot. We're going to do it at the Living Tea Brewing Company. Again, that's 302 Wisconsin Avenue, Oceanside. Their website is Living Tea Brewing Company. Well, Living Tea Brewing CO, Co. Dot com. Uh, so uh, mark your calendars for that. That is what we're doing next week. I uh, No excuses. I'm coming down from San Bernardino. Uh, it's still less than 100 miles. So if you're in Southern California, definitely check it out. Uh, hey, and if you, if you live in Yuma, uh, to check it out. It'd probably be closer. Well, I don't, I don't want to say that, but uh, definitely check that out. All right, so um, like I said, I'm not going to get to the calls just yet. I, I hope everyone will be patient. Uh, we'll get to everybody after this segment. So uh, I posted yesterday we had two... Uh, what, uh, uh, Tickets thrown out. I did not go into detail in the article uh, because it is just—it was just a matter of time. I need it, and that's why the video is a is the, done the way it is because there's no editing really done, and so to save time, I needed to get that. I wanted to get that posted because the one from Jordan in federal court was last week, so he has since had another traffic ticket thrown out. We don't have the documentation for that, so we will get that posted as soon as Jordan gets that to me. But the federal charge was a disorderly conduct, could just be contempt of cop is what that's typically done. And the prosecutor filed a voluntary withdrew, with, with, withdrawal on that, voluntary dismissal, which was nice. The other one, and again, I do apologize that I don't have many details in the article. Uh, but the, it was a credit card. It was about, uh, I can't remember the exact amount. I think it was around $800 that they were trying to get. And it was defended on the same grounds like we did, like I mentioned in the video, with Armando. So it's, it's, it's not just a matter of jurisdiction as far as the Constitution and Code applying. But it's also a matter of that they don't have a valid cause of action, that they're trying to claim that there's a contract dispute, that there's a breach of contract. And in the motion to dismiss, 
and the discovery request, we're requesting uh, some, some facts that would lead a reasonable person to believe that there was actually a contract that's in dispute. And they were not able to do that because uh, they're not able to show a full meeting of the minds because they're being loaned credit that's created with the stroke of the pen. It's created by the application. So uh, it, it, it goes to whether one of the four elements of the contract, which you have to have facts to support, not just legal conclusions. Just saying you had a contract doesn't mean that there is a contract. Just showing that somebody made credit card payments doesn't mean that there was a contract. Someone could perform on something, and it doesn't mean that there's actually a contract. There has to be a meeting of the minds. You have to be agreeing to the same damn thing. And so that's part of the motion to dismiss, and obviously what we're asking in the discovery request. And the judge actually, from what I was, what I got in the email, was from Jerry, was that Dwight, who was the defendant there, was when he was in court, reported back that the judge did say that the plaintiff's attorney had to return the discovery. So instead of filing and providing the discovery material they filed a voluntary withdrawal or a dismissal. And so neither one of them are with, with prejudice. But, you know, hey, we know what happened like with Armando, which there was a lot more at stake there. They, they refiled and we were able to get it thrown out uh, with prejudice after that because, hey, if you don't have the evidence, you don't have the evidence. And they should have had the evidence before filing. Um, so I mentioned that there were four dismissals. And this one uh, I want to talk about, but uh, we'll get to the calls after the break. But uh, it, this was a complete shock to me. I actually have a, uh, for 2014, someone I was, I'm working with in California uh, where the Franchise Tax Board was attacking, and we were able to get one of the two years tossed out, and it was a complete surprise. I had, I didn't. I even had to have the guy clarify what he meant by 2014 was closed. But I'll discuss that more, and we'll get to your calls after this break. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project. I hope we've got the audio things uh, taken care of. But, hey, uh, the audio should be pretty damn good, though, for the podcast that I'll get up right after the show, and I should be able to get the vi- you know video, just, just graphics and whatnot, uh, for the YouTube channel, which I know, uh, and I appreciate everyone who is uh, subbed and is, is uh, supporting the uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, welcome back, everybody. The number is 218-632-9399 if you want to join the big show today. And uh, I'll keep saying, this is a, I'm going to, I'm really looking forward to this. I think we're going to have a t- uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, next week uh, at this time, the show is going to be live from the Living Tea Brewing Company in uh, Oceanside, California. And we're going to have a, uh, a jam after that. So, uh, yeah, I, I do have to do a little tweaking on my Les Paul. I was talking to a friend, Chris, who's, Gonna, who's all the bumpers are going to be of uh, Chris uh, maybe next week if we get that to him but uh, he's a phenomenal blues player and uh, so the neck is a little bit out and so other than that I, you know but hey w- anyway we're going to have a lot of fun so I definitely check it out uh, the No Stay Project live October 14th at the Living Tea Brewing Company in Oceanside California Yes, welcome back to the No State Project. I'm Mark Stevens. Your number here is 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020. You can instant message me first if you want to join me on Skype, and that is at Frank Rizzo 3. That's Frank Rizzo with the number 3. When I noticed about the No State Project, we are three short of having a 400 participants in the No State Project Skype chat. So... Uh, Always a good sign. The show is growing. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everyone who helps with the role playing. So if you are being attacked by one of those bureaucrats, those people that we call government, get over to the No State Project Skype chat. Check out all the information that we have at marstevens.net learning to learn how to effectively defend yourself. We use the Socratic method. We, we employ logic and reason that the burden of proof is on the accuser, which is what makes this FTB call, this Franchise Tax Board call, so funny. I'm going to do my best to get that 
uh, there's a lot of personal information in that one, so I do have to, since it's taxes, so I do have some editing I need to do, but boy, uh, it, it, it's hilarious when you get off the call, when you're just listening to it, not when you're doing the call, uh, at the stupid things that people say to try to get around the effectiveness of the Socratic method of just asking these questions. And, and um, I'm sure I've been accused of this before, but I guess since it, it just happened a couple of days ago, uh, it, it's so fresh in my mind, I'm trying to think of when somebody has accused me of, of doing this before. But uh, it, I, it was, it, it's funnier to go through this when I'm not trying to resolve the problem <laughs> for somebody. I can, you know, there I have to focus and I can't just laugh and, 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 and say to somebody, are, 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 you sm- are you on the pot, son? Are you, uh, you know, are you drunk right now? Because it was, it was so stupid. But uh, I'll get to that. All right. Uh, again, the number is 2 and 8 6 3 2 9 3 9 9. He's been on the show before. But we're not having quite the tech issues that we had uh, the last time, so I want to bring him back uh, from the Big D. Tom, welcome back. Hey, Mark. How's it Hello. going today? Uh, again, the first thing I want to do is apologize. I, I you know, I, it, it, when I want to be an asshole, I can. But I really didn't want to. Uh, I was really not trying to dis- disrupt the show last. Uh, I think it was Wednesday or something, or you know. Anyway, I, I apologize. Uh, it's so. Uh, but all, all I'd in like the past. to uh, address. I'd like to address a, a couple of quick things. Um, for one. Uh, it's very interesting. The judge, uh, uh, Catherine Steenland, here that is one, my, you know, responsible for walking off the the, the uh, bench, my one loser, and uh, also uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. There's another guy that called in here that uh, from this area, this the same exact city here, that spoke with you, and she also railroaded him. She has already been uh, uh, convicted of two DUIs, and now she just got arrested for a hit and run. Jeez. So, but, of course, she's going to get off. You know that. You know how that works when she's a judge. The rulers have their own rules. What was her last name again? Steenland. S-T-E-E-L-A-N-D. I believe that's what it is. I'm pretty pretty sure of it. And this is in, is this in the big D? Uh, well, it's, it's one of the cities. It's a city called Roseville. It's just outside of Detroit. And uh, again, she, you know, she's the fairest judge of them all. I mean, she the transcript I got from her is something else. And again, when when I was, uh, you know, when I tried the, uh, you know, at first, you know, I I, I intend on pleading guilty, uh, and uh, blah blah blah. Ten minutes into it, she got tired of of arguing, as she thinks it is. I'm asking questions. And she said, you know, I heard you say you wanted to plead guilty at the beginning of this. Bam, slammed the gavel down. You're, I'll take that. You're, it was responsible. They're not guilty. It was a civil infraction. And she says, I'll take it. You're responsible. Boom, gets up, goes to walk off the bench, you know, and, and that's where it was left. But anyway, so, yeah, isn't that interesting? Two DUIs and now a hit and run. And, the, and she's a judge. Yeah, I, I, I'll get to send the video. I'll get it linked up. Uh, there, yeah, it's a, the Detroit Free Press is reporting Roseville judge under investigation for allegedly driving away after sideswiping another car. Uh, yep. Wow. Uh, Roseville District Court, just give me a moment here, Tom. Roseville District Court yep. Judge Catherine Steenlin, and you, you had, you, 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 you just missed an N. It's S T E E N L A N D, Steenlin. Uh, handles hit-and-run cases in her courtroom, but now she is under investigation for her alleged involvement in one. Roseville Police Chief James Berlin referred questions about the incident to the Michigan State Police, which has taken over the investigation. State Police First Lieutenant Michael Shaw did not immediately return a message by the free press. A complaint was made, and as Judge Steenland is a sitting judge responsible for the city of Roseville, the matter was turned over to the Michigan State Police for investigation, Berlin said in a statement today. Any comment regarding this matter will have to come from the MSP, the Michigan State Police. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, now, and she, she, was, she was the sitting chief judge at that time, so I had nowhere else to go. 
you know, to appeal, at least in that district court. That's why when she walked off that bench, you know, again, I was pretty upset with you for a while there because uh, I was ready to fight this thing to the end. And I didn't realize that to go to the next step, which is circuit court here in this area, uh, and I have realized that you don't know, you can't possibly know, you would think all the rules would be the same nationwide, but oh no, everybody's got their own little hoops to jump through, and I, I, I understood all, I, yeah, but, I but, learned all that. But Tom, for, for you and everyone else, any time a judge denies a motion for a change of judge, universally, as, as, and I've seen this everywhere, or even in Canada, you can do a motion, a petition for a writ of mandamus to review that denial. So that's a fairly standard thing. And I, you know, everyone who works with me, I, you know, I, I, everyone who works with me will get a copy if, if when they keep in touch with me, that uh, we get a motion to change the judge. And in that motion to change the judge, we're putting the issues in that would uh, be required if we're going to maintain a petition for writ of mandamus in the higher court to review that. Don't go anywhere, uh, Tom. So you just hold tight. My name is Mark Stevens. You're listening to the No State Project here on LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network. We'll be back with Tom from the Big D talking about this Kathleen Steenland, who, unlike us, is still walking free. Just welcome back to the No State Project. I'm Mark Stevens. Author of Government Diet website, of course, MarkStevens.net. We're going to get right back into this. We're going to bring Tom back up. And Tom, thanks for uh, calling in with this. It's always good to report as much as we can when these judges uh, uh, get caught like this. Uh, One of the things that you said about recusing the judge or moving for another judge or whatever, I wasn't wasn't at that point yet. You know, I I was at a point of of appealing uh, a decision that she made. And, of course, it was appealed in front of her because she was the chief judge, and I didn't think of, you know, well, there would have been no other judge to, to go to. The, 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 in district court, she was the chief judge. So, you know, anyway, so that, that, that I think was a, a moot point, maybe. I don't know. Uh, if I'm in a, in a district court and I'm facing the chief judge, and this chief judge, I don't want to see this chief judge because this is the judge that's been on my case, what would you suggest to do? Other than cha- filing a motion to change the judge? Yeah, I mean, change venue or something, because that's the only option, because she was the chief judge at that time. Well, but she's not the only judge. Right, correct. Change of venue... In district court, there was... Yeah, change yeah. of venue, I, you've seen very rarely where you prevail on a change of venue. I've seen many, many situations where we've gotten a change of judge, Um I would have done the motion to change the judge. Yes, she is the one that's going to make the decision. She's the presiding judge, and she's going to tell you to go to hell. Uh, in some places, if it's criminal, you get a change of judge. You don't need any reason. Uh, but the denial of, of the, the, the putting in the motion to change the judge is really just setting them up for a petition for a writ of mandamus to bring it out of their court into the higher court. So she may be the bigwig there, uh, but she's not in total control in the higher court. And so the prosecutor would then have to defend against the motion, the, the petition. That's what I would do. You don't have mu- really much option other than that. I, I know we talk about filing an insurance claim, but uh, you, know, you want to show a little bit more. You probably have to show a little more damage than just what she did there. I mean, obviously, pleading guilty or responsible for somebody, she has no discretion to do that. Not when you're trying to plead guilty. I mean, no, no they have no okay, discretion by, to plead guilty for you. Yeah, by the way, by the way, she never heard any testimony at all. Okay, the officer was there, uh, the prosecutor was there, and by the time I was done asking, you know, by the time I pissed her off by asking questions, she never even uh, asked the officer. Actually, she, she asked us both to stand up and swear in. I never swear in because I'm not here to testify. And, and, you know, the officer's standing there, she says, she, and he, she says, put your hand out. So she didn't swear him in or myself. And she never took any testimony from him at all. She just found me guilty or is responsible with no testimony. But anyway, uh, again, that's that's long history ago. I know now what to do. But, you know, at that time, I didn't know how to move it to the higher court, which is the circuit court, which has many different hoops because I did try to do that. 
And when I went there, and you know, just like in district, it's easy to file uh, a, a, a an appeal, but not when you go to district. Even the transcript, the, the her, Judge Steenland's uh, uh, secretary or whatever you want to call her, I don't like. I know they don't like that term, but she was really nice to me. I mean, her and I got to have a pretty good rapport. She got a pretty good deal with me. I was unemployed at the time, and she cut the fees on my transcript and, you know, I mean, really nice lady. But when it came to this one and I wanted to appeal it, she said, Tom, this is a special one. I need to, this is a a completely different format, blah, blah, blah. It's just oops, just more bullshit, excuse me, more baloney to, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, dissuade us to continue. But anyway, I I don't want to, I don't want to rehash. Well, well, let me finish. Let me get back to to what you reported on with this uh, judge, Kathleen, was it Catherine? Yep. Catherine Steen, Steenlin, where uh, the chief judge, Marco Santia of the 39th district court told the free press that Berlin informed him Monday about the accident. He said the allegation is that Steenlin was involved in a traffic accident on the evening of September 25th, left the scene and returned to her home. Santilla said he has not seen any police reports, but was told that the Steenlin, that Steenlin sideswiped another vehicle as she was making a turn. He said that he believed the crash was on Grodiet between 13 Mile and, and Masonic. Crash it. <laughs> yeah, oh, crash it. Okay. Yeah, that's right where I live. Oops, sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, that, that, sorry. Never mind. Okay. Uh, that doesn't tell Yeah, there's a lot of people in the area. Uh, Santilla said that he yeah. was told that... He said that he was told the other driver followed Steenland to her house, watched her get out of her vehicle, and go into her home. Santia did not know who reported the incident to authorities. When asked if Steenland, who, who has a previous conviction, so you're, you're right on the money about this one, previous conviction for drinking and driving had been drinking, Santia said he was not aware of anything along those lines. As far as he knows, he said there were no injuries. He said no injuries. Well, <laughs> the guy's car was hit. Uh, that's a legal injury. Uh, he said he was not, uh, maybe they're thinking of physical injuries. Uh, he said he has not heard if any official charges have been brought. Really? Santia told the free press that he has not talked with Steenlin, who has been on leave since July 21st. Wow. Yeah, paid vacation. Wow. The rulers, the, ru- <laughs> the rulers write their own rules and they get paid big- yeah, don't even want to get into that. That's not actually why I told him, but uh, Q wrote that down, you know, to remind me. Uh, she's she's at a birthday party today, but anyway, she wrote that down to really get me PO'd the other day because I heard it also. And anyway, But I these things are important up. to bring up. I want to say here, Steenland was suspended without pay for 90 days after a 2008 case in Ogama. Well, I County in which she pleaded guilty to operating a vehicle while visibly impaired. She was driving while intoxicated after drinking beer in June 2008 and pleaded guilty to the misdemeanor in the 82nd District Court in West Branch in Northern Michigan. The Michigan Judicial Tenor Commission tenure uh, recommended the suspension and public censure. The Michigan Supreme Court accepted the commission's recommendation in a 2008 order. Wow. Uh, and so imagine that. She's walking around free. They don't even know if charges have been brought yet. Her boss doesn't know if charges, who's the chief, he's the chief, presiding judge there, doesn't even know if charges have been brought yet. Wow. So you, you talk yep. about preferential treatment and that there are two sets of laws. Yeah, it's good to be one of the king's men. Absolutely. Well, Tom, just hold on a second. We'll get, it, we'll get into things that you called about in the next segment. But this is very important. Uh, always bring it to my attention so we can report and get something on YouTube so that people can see uh, what, these, what kind of people these judges are and the protections that they get. We'll be back with the second of three hours of Anarchy Radio in just a moment here on the Library Radio Network, so don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project. Thanks for tuning in for the second hour of Anarchy Radio right here on the Liberty Radio Network. It's October 7, 2017. Glad to be with you. We'll be live on Wednesday, and even though I'm out of town for the 14th, this is going to be huge. We're going to be live. The show will be live from the Living Tea Brewing Company in uh, Wisconsin, 302 Wisconsin Avenue in Oceanside. And uh, I 
probably, I, I, I don't know, it depends. If we've got a lot of people in the audience, I may not take a lot of calls, but I'll probably still have it set up so I could take calls. But uh, definitely, if you are in Southern California, come, come out and check it out. I'd like to see you out there. I'd love to uh, be able to do the show with uh, people actually in the room. Uh, and, and then, of course, we're going to be jamming uh, with some blues. So I'm bringing the bass and the guitar. Uh, so the Les Paul's coming out with me. So this is going to be fun. Don't know if it'll be a regular thing, but I certainly, uh, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't turn it down. Uh, you want to join me on the big show? It's two and eight six three two nine three nine nine two and eight six three two nine three nine nine. And the passcode is twenty twenty. I want to bring Tom back up from the Big D. Uh, I, I just, I, I have to say something that's just so ironic at the end of this uh, article regarding what the Santia, the presiding judge, said. Uh, so just bear with me for just a moment. Uh, this won't be lost on anybody. Anyone who's ever been to court knows this is just, ah, uh, makes my skin crawl. Santia has said he, he has known Steenland for 25 years. He said he was an associate. She was an associate in his office when he was in private practice before she became a referee in a juvenile court and then a magistrate in the 39th district court where she was later elected a judge. This is a bad situation, he said. We hope for the best for her. Oh, come on. You think they have even, they can even fame that much when you and I are before them? Oh, this is a bad situation, sir, and I really hope for the best for you. Yep. They got their own rules, man. The rulers are, that's what, that's the thing. Every time I speak with someone that, you know, you're proud to be an American and you're in the freest country in the world. And, Jeez. you know, the, the the military fights for your freedoms and blah, blah, blah. And, it, and it's there. It's not so. The, 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 the leaders, the rulers, that's what they are. They have their own rules. They don't, the rules don't apply to them. Ever. Nope. nope. It, that, that's, that's clear. It's sick. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, wait, no, it, 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 nothing to be sorry about. The the only time somebody could say something like that is to be just woefully ignorant. To No, to, woefully leader, ruler. <laughs> He's part of the ruling class. Uh, well, I'm saying to somebody who would deny that, that that's true. The fa Look, I, I'll right. keep going back to one of the most glaring incidents of, this, of the oligarchy and the privilege of people in government who called themselves government dick cheney shot a man in the face and wasn't arrested he was drinking yeah. he shot a man in the face with a shotgun and not only did he not suffer even in an investigation in, in no kind of you know uh investigative detention that they like to call it but his victim went on national television and apologized. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. The most yeah. recent well. example of that is you got uh, Tillerson, who has to go on on uh, net, net, network television and uh, and have to uh, give you know another loyalty statement to the dear leader. You know, it, it just wow. So yes, there is an oligarchy in the United States. There are you do have certain more uh, uh, freedoms than you may have other places. But to say that you're free, that there's not a leader, that there's not rulers, and that those rulers don't have a different set of rules that they live by? No, you you've got to be either an idiot or you're just lying. There's the, the evidence is absolutely overwhelming. My gosh, Tom, there was a judge that we just reported recently. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. He sent an innocent man to jail and when he was a prosecutor. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He did it. He got 10 days in jail. Well, well look, look at, I mean, think about it. Look at Terry, you know, and his son. His son, Terry was trying to educate his son, uh, you know, to, you know, stand up for himself and blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and he went tried he tried to do this and and the judge knew it and he slammed him I mean one question and he's in he's in jail for contempt yeah he scared the shit out of him and that was the intent so now you know they're, they're evil man <laughs> and, and you yeah. know what mark I gotta tell you something brother you are the one that, that really that has enlightened me 
my my buddy Kirk turned me on to your first book, you know, uh, and I, and and then I met you. you know, we spoke, and I've never met you, but uh, again, I, I am so appreciative of you opening my eyes to what these people are about, and and being able to go to court several times and have so called wins. We don't ever win; it's just damage control. But you know. I, I don't fear these guys any these people anymore. I do. No, I, I, I'll, I'll rephrase that. We always fear them. <laughs> they can put us in a cage, have us killed, whatever. Yep. But man, I have a whole lot more backbone, brother, and it's because of you. So, hey, <laughs> thank you. All right, thanks. I appreciate that. I just want to point out again. And I'll say this every show, so people, new people, get, you know, and it's not forgotten. This this is more evidence of the oligarchy at play. Today in Texas, yep. this is from last year, the Huffington Post. I'll have the link in the video on, in, the, in, in the article. Today in Texas, former prosecutor and judge Ken Anderson pled guilty to intentionally failing to disclose evidence in a case that sent an innocent man, Michael Morton. Michael Morton is his name. His name is Michael Morton. His name is Michael Morton to prison for the murder of his wife. It's not only bad enough his wife was killed, this piece of garbage... Put him in jail for it. Uh, when trying the case as a prosecutor, Anderson possessed evidence that may have cleared Morton, including statements from the crime's only eyewitness that Morton wasn't the culprit. Anderson sat on this evidence and then watched Morton get convicted. While Morton remained in prison, prison for the next 25 years, Anderson's career flourished, as they will when you put innocent people in jail, and he eventually became a judge. So think about this, Tom. These... All these guys, these prosecutors like Ken Anderson, that are guilty of an epidemic of Brady violations, where do they usually go from there? They become judges. These people are criminals. Yep. So Michael Morton is the name we should be remembered. He went to jail for prison for killing his wife for 25 years. So don't anyone try to convince me that there's not an oligarchy and that they are not going by a different set of rules. This man spent 10 days in jail. Tom, can you do 10 day, only 10 days in jail, even in the big D for marijuana possession? Point being, <laughs> there's no way no, these people routinely lock the little people up, the plebes like me and you, and they lock us up routinely. There was that one in what, we, we know someone who listens to the show, we heard the judge say this, 30 days for asking a question. And this judge put yep. a man, an innocent man, in prison for 25 years. He got 10. So don't anyone tell me that there's not a, a ruling class with, with, with different rules because you're wrong. And just like it says here, this is the first time ever that it's happened and the Brady violations have been considered at epidemic levels for years before this even happened so they're not they don't get held accountable they are monsters they and that's why I tell people you cannot when you're defending against these people you cannot think that you're being bad to them or that you're badgering them but you're asking some questions like what happened with the franchise tax board the other day you just have to let that roll off. All they're doing is trying to divert your attention away from the fact that they are dead wrong and they don't have the evidence to support their claims. But hey, just hold tight. We'll be back in just a few moments. My name is Mark Stevens. You're listening to the No State Project here on LRN.fm. We'll be back in just a moment. Remember, Michael Morton is his name. Welcome back to the No State Project. Three hours of Anarchy Radio here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.fm. And anarchy meaning no rulers. We reject the concept, that the idea, the claim that we need to have rulers in a ruling class. And we believe that the rules should apply to everyone, regardless of social status. And if you don't agree with that, then you're probably, well, you're not an anarchist. And you, you definitely support certainly what we have now. Uh, we'll bring Tom back. And Tom, oh, one moment. Uh, I just want to read a little bit more here where they're saying that uh, government misconduct, including disclosure breaches known as Brady violations, occurs so frequently that it has become one of the chief causes of wrongful conviction. What's newsworthy and novel about today's plea is that a prosecutor was actually punished in a meaningful way for his transgressions. Now, 
He, I, I take issue with a meaningful way. Putting this piece of human excrement in jail for only 10 days is a slap in the face. Could you imagine Michael Morton, how Mike Morton must feel? He did 25 years in prison, in a maximum security prison. This piece of garbage went to a jail for 10 days. And you know he was not put in, <laughs> you know he was not treated and, and, and with the same like contempt. Like I said, again, just like Terry's son, you know, ask one question. Terry's trying to inspire him to do what we do and stand up for ourselves. And one freaking question, and the guy sentences, sentences him to jail, a cage? Really? And the question was, it was just like, like a standard question anybody could ask. And I, I, like uh, Kim asked recently, you know, she, she, she asked the question of, uh, like, uh, oh, what, what, what is uh, cause, cause of nature? She asked the question of cause of nature. And the, the prosecutor says, well, what do you mean by that? I don't understand that. And the judge says, well, I'll ask another question. Prosecutor says, prosecutor doesn't understand that question. What? You don't understand the question of the cause and nature of the charges? Are you kidding me? It's a standard, it's a standard douchebag move. Ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's a standard move. It's very similar to what this franchise tax board agent did with me, but I'll talk about that in a different, in a different segment. Listening to the No Stay Project here on LRN.FM, the Liberty Radio Network. We'll be back with your calls and more, including my phone call with the Franchise Tax Board in just a few moments, so don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the No Stay Project. I'm Mark Stevens, live from the Fortified Compound. It's October 7, 2017. Remember, we will be live on Wednesday, and really big thing coming up on the 14th, live from the Living Tea Brewing Company in Oceanside, California, and we'll have a blues jam after that. I will get the details, the uh, street address, and uh, the times up on markstevens.net under the upcoming events. So definitely check that out. If you are in Southern California, we'd love to see you come out. So uh, Government Indicted has a full model on how to effectively defend yourself that has, since its release, has proven uh, very effective and that we've been able to replicate many people from four continents, actually, because we have Eyal of No State Project Israel, who has had success in Israel, uh, replicating the results based on what was in the book. And it is just keeping the prosecution to their burden of proof. He who makes the accusation bears the burden of proof. And we have no business taking that burden upon ourselves. No business. You'll notice... That is typically where people run into the problem by making affirmative statements, not taking the uh, keeping the burden of proof on the prosecution where it belongs. Does it make them crazy? Yeah. Imagine anybody would get crazy if, if somebody, some con man, someone who's trying to put something over on you, someone who wants you to believe something just because they say so and that they're willing to hurt you. And they're claiming to be fair, independent, and impartial. And of course, when you ask questions to bring out that that's not true, when someone they're contradicting themselves in front of people who put them up on a literal pedestal, or looking at them like, dude, whoa, how can this... Just answer the question. It's so easy. Of course the laws apply. You, Of course you can prove that. You can't. Uh, I want to go back to the phones. If you want to join me, it's 218-632-9399. 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020-2020 with the pound sign. Uh, we've got another call from 818. Uh, you're live on the No State Project. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Richard Bowden again, Mark. You oh, got me? Yeah, Richard. What uh, what's What's going on? I have an idea that I'd like to exchange some of my work, uh, and it's, it's stuff I've been working on for quite a while, and I think it could help them, the effort, uh, and uh, like copywriting and all of that stuff. Uh, okay, uh, is, it a, is this 
All right, give me the give me the cliff notes. Give me some of the details on on and how it. Uh, okay, well, the, show. Uh, the source for the copyright comes from uh, a, a series of books called the uh, Redemption Code, Cracking the Code. Redemption yeah, no, no, no. I've already debunked that stuff on the show many times. Not, uh, no, we we stick to the Socratic method. We just take the 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 arguments and the claims that are being used against us, and by asking questions, we we bring out that they're that they have no evidence. If they had the evidence, they would pre- they would present it. That redemption stuff, I don't see any merit to it at all. The name in all caps being sold on the on the stock exchange. Uh, you don't put yeah, anything yeah, on. You're the talking st- about you're talking about the OPP uh, stuff. That's kind of interesting. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about claiming ownership of your name. Yeah, the same thing. Uh, the it, it, no, no one's been able to produce a shred of evidence. If you have evidence to show that that's true, then 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 I'd listen to it. But I, I, you know, I've had guys on the show who are proclaimed, you know, self-proclaimed you're, you're going, experts. You're going, you're going after the uh, treasury direct account. I'm not talking about that. Uh, do you uh, just, just think about this? Do you do you or don't you own your name? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't even see it as a ma- uh, as a matter of of ownership. That's just what people call me, and and I don't. I I just I I cannot dedicate. Uh, the show to conjecture and 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 things that we've already oh, debunked on the show. This, this isn't conjecture. I've worked this stuff and it works. I, I, I I'd have to I'd have to see the evidence. The reason that they can uh, enter a plea of a not guilty on your behalf is because they're claiming your name, and if you don't let them claim it, they can't go any further. <sighs> What's the evidence that they're claiming the name? As theirs, mm-hmm. what what evidence do you have that well, they're claiming the name is theirs? Well, the evidence is is that I federally registered the copyright with the California <sighs> Secretary of State, lower caps, and I also published it in a record of public organ, <laughs> organ of public record, and uh, I ran that uh, at the uh, County of Los Angeles Superior Court uh, last week, and. Uh, <laughs> They couldn't get. They couldn't wait to get me out there fast enough. I didn't have to pay any bail or fine or anything else. I've got a, I've got another appearance coming up, but I'm pretty sure they're going to dump the whole thing because uh, they had a moment when I read my copyright in open court. They had a moment. What does that mean? Yeah. That's, well, this is this is what you may or may not be paying attention to, but. The minions or the, the, the bailiffs and the court, clerk, uh, court clerks and so on, uh, they know the shit is coming. And well, part well, of the well, knowing of that is that people like you and others that are going in, and just the one fact, and people please get this, just standing up on your hind legs in court is, is an action they are not prepared for. Uh, this is back in the 70s. I heard a statistic that if only... Two percent, or maybe point two percent of the people just pled not guilty. It would shut the system down. And I kind of, I'll go with two percent. But that means that uh, two out of every hundred people that go in there need to plead not guilty. Uh, the system is only built for you to plead guilty, uh, no contest, or or uh, uh, innocent, uh, not guilty. And that's what they're built on. But if you throw any monkey wrench in there, as you know, and which is what you're doing, uh, you, you can stop the train. And and that's one idea uh, as far as stopping the train. Okay, but but Richard, but the, hold the on. Idea I would go for uh, but, but, with this energy, what, what everybody's doing. But, but Richard, Richard, I gotta. I, okay, you gotta let me jump in here. What evidence do you have that they're trying to take ownership and claim your name is theirs? Well, uh, why would they then then do the dance, all capital letters, and then lowercase cap? Why would they do that, Mark? Well, because it could just be a simple uh, computer program, and that's what they do, because they don't use your name in all caps in anything other than the caption. When you look at the actual order, your name in the order is in proper English. So, again, the... That does not explain to me or show that that's evidence that they're trying to take ownership of the name instead of just trying to identify you that way. There is That's two separate things. Identifying me as Mark Stevens is completely different than trying to take ownership of the name Mark Stevens. Yeah, are, are you right? familiar with uh, Jordan Maxwell's work? Well, wait, wait, wait. Let's not... Let, let's stay on topic here. I think Jordan Maxwell is... Oh, no, I'm, I, wait, wait, wait. I got to mute you up. You got to let me speak. 
Jordan Maxwell has an extremely, extremely poor grasp of etymology and the evolution of even the English language. So he's not somebody that I would consider an expert on etymology and the origin, uh, you know, of, of language. But you need to explain the evidence that proves they're trying to take ownership of your name. Well, uh, the way the court reacted when I read my copyright, uh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, but how does that prove that they're trying to take ownership of your name? Well, they didn't have anything to say about it. And usually they have something to say about it. And listening to your patter about the results and paranoid going up there and, you know, uh, been there, done that. I did this stuff back in... Uh, 1970, I want to say 77, 76, something in there with a work called the Bear Bait Briefs. I don't know if it's still around, but I I I, I sacrificed myself for a year. I'd I'd bait cops, have them pull me over. I'd read them the riot act. Yeah, but go to court. R- Richard, Richard, let go me to court. Uh, wait. Well, let's stick on point here, okay? How yeah. does their lack of a response to you reading that prove? They're trying to take ownership of your name. Could it just be that they're baffled by yet another? And let me put, I, we're going to a break, so I got to mute you up. It could be the simplest explanation without any assumptions would be they're just baffled by what you're saying, and that has no merit whatsoever, no bearing on anything that's been presented. And that, that, to me, that's the simplest explanation. Um, but we'll, we'll explore this a little bit more when we get back here on the No State Project. My name is Mark Stevens. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Yes, welcome back to the No State Project. And briefly, before we bring Richard from Los Angeles back up, I want to just point out that there's a world of a difference when you ask somebody, when somebody makes a claim like a judge or a prosecutor, well, let's just say a prosecutor. When a prosecutor makes a claim, X, Y, Z is true. They bear the burden of proof that that's true. Uh, and that's why you're presumed innocent, even outside of court. Uh, people who understand logic will understand that claims aren't worth anything. That whoever you're making a claim against is presumed innocent because the burden falls on the accuser to present the evidence and the rationale to support their claim. So if, if you or I go into court and, and the prosecutor says the laws apply to you and that's just the way it is, and I say objection – where is your evidence to prove that? What actual evidence, if any, do you have to prove that that's true? If they just stand mute, then we can take from that that their lack of evidence, we can presume that they don't have it. But to present something that you have copyrighted or trademarked your name and that somebody is now using it and is violating that and the fact that they don't say anything in court and just look bewildered or just can't wait until the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the judge ends the proceeding so that they can move on to something else is no evidence in my eyes or even using logic. It's no evidence that they are trying to then take ownership of your name. I mean, that's you're essentially your claim, Richard, is that your evidence proving that they're trying to take ownership of your name is that they didn't say anything when you presented this copyright information, right? That, that's an interesting point, but that's not what this is. But, okay, well, I'm trying to understand your position, and I, 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 that, I, I asked you, I asked you, uh, let me finish. Wait, 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 wait Richard, wait, wait, I got to put you on, all right. I asked you, this is what I go through with the Franchise Tax Board, but I asked you what evidence, if any, do you have to prove that they're trying to take ownership of your name? You're the, you answered me by saying they didn't respond when you presented the information. Well, that, that, was, that, was, that was one judge. Uh, they threw me out of that court, and they directed me to another court, gave me the wrong number, had to ask some people to find it. Uh, they had a they had a real issue with what I was doing, but there's a lot of a lot of setup to this. I wrote I wrote to the presiding judge of the County of Los Angeles Superior Court uh, a notice of violations, and it's pretty powerful. Yeah, but, and I got a nice letter back from his second in command, and it's pretty powerful. Okay. I'd like to actually send you both of those, and we could have a discussion about them. Uh, the, the the proof of of, of the copyright. It goes back to the basic question for anybody. 
Do you own your name? Uh, no, d- 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 what we're trying to get to, Richard, is evidence proving that by using. All right, all right, all right. By, wait, let me finish, you, uh, yeah, Richard, Richard, Richard. Richard, you, <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta. It's a little give and take here. You gotta have to let me speak. The question How is: How are they able to do that? No, the question is: Okay, what evidence, if any, do you have to prove that using your name? is not just to identify you so that they can charge you and prosecute you, but it's actually they're trying to take ownership of their name. So what proof do you have that it's not for identification, it's to take ownership of your name? Okay. What is the name of your vessel? Oh, good Lord. I, 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 you know, I can't get into this, this, um, this I, I, I Jordan know, Maxwell know, crap. Like, what? If you want, if you want evidence and information, just follow the history, brother. It's there. Uh, you know, it's like everybody can't be wrong about this, and the yeah. system is built no, they can't. No, no, team. no. Oh, whoa! An appeal to popularity. You, da- you, you, damn sure everyone can be wrong. Because just look at religious people. The Christians think all the Muslims are wrong. They think all you know the so. No, they don't. So, no, they don't. Whoa, 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 no, what? they don't, brother. But you can't. Not all Christians. But what, if you want to, if you want to be specific, not all Christians think all Muslims are wrong. All, neither do all Muslims think but I was all making, Christians are wrong. But I was making a point. <laughs> You're making. I have to mute you up. I'm making the point, though, Richard, that you, 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 I can't allow you or anyone else when I'm asking for proof to throw out a I'm, I'm, such a I'm logical getting, fallacy as as, a, a, as a, I have to, the logical fallacy being for people who are listening is an appeal to popularity that. You know, two a billion Muslims or a billion Catholics can't be wrong. I, I'm just using that as an example and not a statement on the truth of either one. Just saying that so many X amount of people believe in this can't be wrong. It's different than in a scientific context hey. where where you're talking about you know where peer reviewed studies and da- data have been reviewed when there's a consensus that this is that this is actually accurate. So bring it back to the actual proof. Where is the proof that they're I, not I, just identifying you, but they're actually trying to take ownership of your name? Well, look at the look at the play when you go into court and you sit down. It was it was a it was a comedy show. They had the uh, bailiff, the top dog. I didn't realize they did such salesmanship, but they plumbed everybody up by scaring the bejesus out of them, saying that the judge could charge them, oh I don't know, ten thousand dollars for a traffic ticket, that kind of thing, and that sort of thing. I did not cross the bar. I did not answer to my name. And then when they called my name, I said I have a statement, and I read my copyright. Okay, but you're still not explaining again. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me throw this. Let, wait, let me get it. I got to mute you up again. You got to let me speak because what happens in California, and I've had this, I've had people call the show that this has happened to. Okay. So yeah, it's hearsay on my part, but it, it it's based on what people have reported to me. I've actually seen this myself, where somebody goes in doing what you're talking about, and. What happens is the judge asks him point blank, are you Mark Stevens? And the person will say, I am here as the administrator, that kind of garbage, okay? And so what the judge does is immediately issue, he does two things. He issues a bench warrant for the arrest of Mark Stevens, okay? And then he adds a failure to appear charge. Now, you, you're going to probably argue that they were just trying to get me to agree to the name so that they could take ownership. But Mr. County Clerk, we had a nice little dance about the information. Uh, I read everybody when I approach them. I read the copyright, and as proof of that, just watch any film in this country that's aired. There's a big notice right up front, the copyright notice, federal crime. What? And it's serious business. They protect those copyrights assiduously. So who it. owns your name, brother? Who owns it? I, no, I don't think the name, my, my, my name is, is a matter of, of ownership like it is for, let's say, somebody having uh, the name of a restaurant or something. I, 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 I just, again, you may have a copyright on the name. I'll, I'll give you that. I'm not going to contest that with you. I want you to give me actual proof that shows they are trying to take ownership I, I just, of the name. I just gave you a bit. It's a federal you, crime. 
for someone to use your name without your permission. That is goes back to the point of you owning it. If you own your name and you copyright it, uh, uh, accordingly, that's the register. Okay, well, wait, wait, we're, we're up against the break, and I have to bring somebody else on who wants to talk to you about this. So just a mute you up. Just hold on. My name is Mark Stevens, and this is uh, – it, it, so it's not a matter they're trying to take ownership of your name. They're just identifying you, and you're claiming it's a copyright violation. Uh, two different things. But we'll be back and discuss this more, and we're going to see if we can get Gabe on with this. <laughs> yeah, brute force and ignorance, the great Rory Gallagher. Uh, if you do not have Rory Gallagher live in Europe, 1972, uh, do yourself a favor today and uh, go get a copy because it's totally worth it. Rory Gallagher is such a great musician. He actually makes a mandolin sound cool. So there you go. Rory Gallagher, one of my favorites. Um, hey, maybe we'll actually play uh, Laundromat Blues next week at, uh, at the Blues Jam. That's October 14th, the Living Tea Brewing Company in Oceanside. It's 302 Wisconsin Avenue in Oceanside. No state project, live for three hours, and then we're going to do a Blues Jam. So definitely check it out if you are in the area. We're going to bring back on the show Richard. But Richard, there's uh, we have a listener who apparently has been triggered and uh, wants to address some of these issues with you. So, uh, Gabe, why don't you go first? Uh, yeah, so I've been listening, and I've heard a lot of these things before. And, in fact, I've uh, gone down this path for quite a while and have heard, you know, almost all of these topics that you're bringing up. And, well, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that uh, I think there is some, at the very least, some strangeness regarding the name in context of birth certificates in context of you know loans from china there does seem to be some strangeness there but as far as the evidence i've been able to see empirically it is all just um anecdotal at best <clears throat> uh but can i would I, like to uh, what's can that? i can i come in there can i can i answer to that Sure. The situation that I'm talking about isn't isn't just the copyright. It's it's coming at full frontal, saying, "I am me. Don't 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 tread on me. Don't do it." And that presence that you take to court that's important. These people read body language body language much better than they do anything that you could say to them. And there's certain things that you don't do in court. There's certain things that's- that you can do in court. And so on. Well, you're, but the you're name thing that's body that, language as a defense to that it's anecdotal evidence. You're just you're just proving no, 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 no. You guys, the anecdotal evidence. Wait a minute, wait a minute, but wait a minute. I would like to replay try- this with you because you know, again, I am I am genuinely trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. So could I try role playing this I, with you I, real quick? I'm not giving let's you say, the benefit of anything. I, court, one at a time, guys. Can I, can I speak? Can I speak? Well, you can, can I but I know what you're going to say, so can we actually try this out? And oh, you don't. Brother, 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 you don't have a clue about what I'm going to say. I'm sorry, but you don't. Oh, man. I, <laughs> I, the thing is... Okay, well, be quick. Be quick. Put some solid evidence on the table, oh, please. Is it Mark show or is it Gabe? Now, what, what's going on here? How are you guys dealing with this stuff? Hey, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm, to give... I'm confused. Try- I mean, with trying to give someone an opportunity to address this issue with you, because I, I think I've already made the point with you, and I don't believe you can show any evidence to trying to take ownership of the game. Uh, uh, no, no, wait. Well, let me finish. Let me finish here a second, Rich. Because here, here's an example. Uh, if, if I was to play a certain song, let's say I played the entire uh, Rain and Blood CD from Slayer, okay? Um uh, you know, just saying that doesn't mean I'm trying, just doing that doesn't mean I'm trying to take ownership of it. And, and, and just like you're saying here, even if you own the copy, I don't think you copyright a name like that anyway, a personal name. Maybe a business could be trademarked. But even if, you, if, if we give you the benefit of the doubt that you do have a validly rec- and, and recognized copyright that you could go to court and actually sue somebody for using your damn name. That doesn't mean that 
when they identify you, they're trying to take ownership of your name. That's separate. Identify, using that to identify you is not the same. You have, all right, so please, I'm going to let you come back on. Please answer yes or no to this question. Do you believe that, yeah. that there is a, dis- all right, is identifying, using your name to identify you the same as trying to take ownership of the name? Well, okay. Let's go to the contract. I'll give you some. No, proof. I didn't I ask you that, you Richard. You have to answer the question. Is using you ask your... me? Ask me. You ask me for evidence. No, no, no. The, wait. The, the, the all capital letters name no. and the lower caps name were, uh, 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 and they when they call it out, it, it makes no difference. No, no. What, what I'm saying? asking you is, I'm asking you a, 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 a very direct question. Is using your name to identify you the same thing as trying to take ownership of the name? No, no, no. They are, understand this. They own the name. Answer the question. Just yes or no. Is using the name to identify you the same as trying to take ownership of the name? And they're not trying to take it. They own it, Mark. Oh, and the evidence you have to then show that they own your name. Yes, the evidence is the contract that you sign when the cop under duress makes you sign it. It's oh. a contract, and it has your name on it, and it has the officer's name. That's a contract. That's why they can haul you into court, because you signed a contract. You just used the magic word to show it's not a contract. If it's under duress, is it really a contract? I understand that, but they, they sure as hell, they sure as, as hell believe it. Really? Uh, and the evidence you have to prove that they are seeing the traffic ticket as a contract is? <sighs> do, you, do you know what's in the contract, Mark? <laughs> hold, hold, oh, on, hold, about- on. All hold right. on. Let me step in real quick. I'm going to let Gabe take so, over for a moment. Ahead. You know, we do role plays on the Skype chat all the time, and Kevin always reminds me isolate if they say the thing that shows our code is applicable to you is the contract we isolate is this the only thing that the prosecutor has submitted so far to show that then we can test you know we can do the 180 we can say if the opposite is true then would the opposite be true we can say we can address the gun in the room that's the number two of the one two threes um so if i was to address the most effective of those options I would choose the, uh, if I didn't have the driver's license, then the code would not be applicable to me. Is that what you're saying, Judge? Okay. So would that would that be true? Are you saying that if Mark didn't have a driver's license, then the code wouldn't be applicable to him? Can I answer that, Gabe? Well, yeah, I'm only looking for a yes or a no. No, 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 no. You, you need to have discussion on this, man. I mean, this yes or no stuff, uh, I, I'm sorry, but when you're asking a, com- a complicated question like that, you're going to have a complicated answer. It's not a yes well, or no. It's called uh, a direct question, so why don't you humor me and do me a favor and uh, give me the yes or no? And and you're, you're you're wrong. One at a time. And uh, let him speak, Richard. Let okay, him Gabe. Role playing, let me play my role. I have information here. I've had a lot of success with it. A lot of other people have as well. It's not just the name. It's the, it's the intention of what you have when you go in there and the way you approach these people. Yes, I mean, you know, it's like watching, just listening to Mark today, it's like the, the cases that he's had up, it's like, okay, uh, you do this, you do that, you know, you have a formula and you go in there. This and do that, and 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 based on based on the fact that you're dealing with a psychotic, I don't know that anything would actually work other than the fact that they are breaking the law themselves. And when you point it out to them, they have a problem. That's all I would say. Wait, let let me address something here. Let's just be precise in our language, if we can. They're not psychotic. They may be psychopathic in nature, but they're not psychotic. I've never met a judge, I've never seen a judge that had a psychotic break. Uh, I'm sure they have, but I haven't witnessed that myself. So we're going to go one last segment here. Well, i got to mute you both up. Uh, we're up against the break. I know you guys can't hear the, uh, the bumper, which is really, uh, uh, it, you know, sucks for you guys. But uh, anyway, we'll be back, and we'll finish this discussion to a degree on the other side of the break. So uh, don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the No State Project. We are in the last segment here of the No State Project. Three hours of Anarchy Radio goes really fast. 
And so whoever I missed today, I'm really sorry. We're not going to get to everyone today. I can't go over time today. But I will be live, I promise you, I will be live on Wednesday. So whoever I missed today, definitely call in early for the Wednesday broadcast. And I just want to make a point before we bring Richard and Gabe back. Uh, someone new to the show, uh, Andre, in uh, he's in Adelaide, Australia, pointing out that in Australia you don't even sign the tickets. A lot of times, uh, even in the United States, they don't care if you sign a ticket or not. They'll just, they'll just issue the ticket and tell you, you know, we'll issue a warrant if you don't show up. So uh, another thing is I do know what is necessary for a contract, Richard, and there are four fact elements that are needed to satisfy a contract. And one, it's an agreement. So when there's duress and you're forced to do it and there's a force continuum at play, you kind of negate what the, con- the fact that there's, a, you know, there's no contract. So uh, there has to be a meeting of the minds. If, if you're not agreeing to this, so even if you take the force out of it, if you're not agreeing to the same thing, things there is no contract uh and and i have spoken to police officers many many prosecutors and i even know a judge uh at least from what they've told me they think it's absolute lunacy that they are trying to contract with you they don't consider the driver's license a contract they don't consider the uh a traffic ticket a contract it's 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 actually There's, it's not a contract. There's, there's, it, you, if Mark. you're going to say, well, let me finish this. If you're going to say that they are viewing it as My a contract, brother. then you need to provide the evidence. Do you have evidence that they are acting as if it is a contract? It's all based on the name, brother. They got nothing if they got your name. Don't have your name. They got nothing. Uh, you realize they can issue a warrant for your arrest on the John Doe and not even use your of name. Of course they Mark, you've said it many times, they can do anything they want, but this is the thing. Uh, These people know, let me ask you something. Do you think that judges, prosecutors, politicians, all of of that soup, do you think they know when they're creating evil? Do you think they know it? I want to know if they are acting as if it's a contract. That's what we're trying to get to. They certainly are, Mark. They and the evidence... Are. I think what? it's interesting. Do you mind if I interrupt? Well, I, I, just hold your thought a I'm, second, Gabe. I just want to know the I'm evidence figured. that Richard relies on to prove that they believe it is a contract. Uh, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you circumstantial information about how those things work. Problem. How do you not see that? You, you problem? Let him finish, Gabe. The dynamic of the name issue, yes, you can do that. But the the whole play, and I'm using some of your material, I'd like to get the, uh, actually, I didn't get a chance to even uh, uh, offer the guilty plea uh, because the swirl they threw me into, the judge I got, he couldn't wait to get off the bench. He just wanted to uh, say that I had to make an appearance for my arraignment. And uh, guess what's going to happen before I do that? I've got two weeks before my arraignment. Uh, this is one idea I had. I'm going to go down. I'm going to subpoena oh. the presiding judge of the county of Los Angeles Superior Court. I'm going to subpoena the second in command because I have a letter from him responding to my notice of violations of such things like, oh, the RICO Act and the Constitution, human rights, you know, those contracts, those violations. So, well, and a violation may notice. not be necessary. Necessarily contract. So, all right, let 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 Gabe jump in and ask his question or make his point. Go ahead, Gabe. So, so I'm I'm really not trying to insult you, and I am genuinely trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here. And you know, I, I do yeah, need a challenge. Hey, Richard, a challenge. the problem is, hold on. I have to on, mute buddy. him up. The problem is that everything you've said so far, unfortunately, is fallacious or anecdotal at best. And, you know, I care about that one thing. There's one thing. Once we get past all these red herrings that you've thrown out and all these red herrings that judges and prosecutors and lawyers throw out, driver's license, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's not the driver's license. It's not, um, you know, voting, uh, which is what I've been told. It's not your neighbor's voting, which is another I've been Mm -hmm. told. At the end of the day, it's because you're physically here that yep. they believe their code is applicable to you. Yep. And this is what I've been trying to role play with you is a judge will tell you, I don't care about these things you're saying. I care, you know, if you're here, then our code's applicable to you. 
how are you going to handle when a judge asks when a judge throws that at you? Richard? I didn't do that dance. I just read my copyright. That's all okay. I did. Well, what I would like to suggest okay, so here, then, Richard, wait, wait, let me, let me, let me jump in here. Yes. What I would like to say, Richard, in all seriousness, okay, I would prefer that if you're doing it for you and anybody else who's doing this name game stuff, please don't drag my work into the mix because I really don't want to see people that I'm working with that are sticking to just logic and reason be labeled a domestic terrorist because of things like this, because that's all that I see that doing. And I want to jump, because we're almost out of time. You said you you have proof that you have shown that, that using the name and, and, and calling them out on these alleged violations, that you have proof that it has been effective. Uh, what kind of proof is that? And can you send that to me? Well, I don't know. The, the assistant presiding judge of the County of Los Angeles Superior Court, which, by the way, is probably one of the most... Uh, powerful superior court systems in the world. Uh, the second in command took uh, gave me a page and a half. I didn't I didn't expect him to even respond uh, right. to my notice of violations. But there's some really good stuff in there about what he didn't answer. And you know it's like you've had it happen to you. They won't answer you when you ask them a, a leading question. Uh, you know like well what's your authority that kind of thing. And it's like you're playing you're, you're playing a game. You're in court. It, you know you, you know Richard. you serve. He he defends. He he, he knocks it back. You defend. Right, you I have to meet you up again, and I'm sorry. I need you to just answer the question. What kind of proof do you have that this has been successful? Okay. Well, normally when you're at your arraignment. They usually charge you bail. One thing, uh, they gave me a piece of paper that did not have a signature on it. When I asked the court clerk to write uh, under duress on that piece of paper, she refused. Okay, okay, Richard, let me ask you this. I'll ask you a more pointed question. On my website, I, I have, wait, wait let, let, no, I, I, but I, 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 I have to mute you. I, I don't have the time. We're almost out of time. We have to get to this. So an example I have is like what I just posted. I have actual orders signed by judges granting the motion to dismiss that I wrote. I have dismissals from, uh, from prosecutors. I have uh, from the Internal Revenue Service. I have documentation from them stating that based on the information I provided, no, there, there, there is no obligation to file. Do you have any orders from the, a court or an administrative body that is dismissing a, an accusation or claim against you based on your, this name stuff, this copyright stuff? Mark. Yes or no? Okay. Mark, Mark. It's a yes or no question, here. Richard. You got to you oh. got to show me that much uh, respect. Okay, j j just please listen. I've told you several times. All I did I, when I'm I I'm out of time though, Richard. You, you're not understanding me, Richard, you're not understanding me. I am almost completely out of time. I need a yes or no que answer to it because it's a very do you have proof from a court or an administrative body where a complaint against you was thrown out based on this kind of defense? No, no, uh, it's not going to be thrown right. out for that. I, I have a lot more on the plate than just that. Okay, uh, I, I, I uh, have he, evidence he, he, of he, any he, dismissals, even one. Even yes one. No? Yes, I've had, I've had judges turn cases for me. I've had judges yes. go after prosecutors. Okay, yes. I've had okay. Judges okay. okay, Richard, pops. okay, that's a yes. Okay, do you have that in writing that you can post? Okay, I, it, is the order from the judge in writing that you were successful? Yeah, I've got a lot of information, Mark. Like I said, I've been hitting this for 50 years, brother. I, I've been around the tree a couple of times. Okay. Well, and I know exactly what you're talking about. The reason that I'm following you, if you would like to know. Well, actually, I, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to mute you up. up. Uh, I, I really hate to do that, but I am completely out of time. I know people on the call the line, you cannot hear the uh, uh, the bumper, but we are totally out of time. Uh, I will follow up and, and with Richard off air. For a couple of minutes, and uh, if there is actual, he said yes, there was proof from a judge that he's been successful in this, then I will I will be happy to post it. 
uh, on markstevens.net. I'm, I'm skeptical, I, but hey, if the evidence is there, the evidence is there. Uh, my name is Mark Stevens. Uh, again, this has been live for uh, October 7, 2017. We'll be live the next two shows. And uh, till then, salut. Salud.